This is Mr. Martin. These are the video notes for Geometry Honor, section 9.9. .9. Uh, we're going to be talking about right triangle trigonometry, a uh, very important topic. You're going to see it uh, quite a bit uh, in your future math courses. So uh, anyway, we'll, we'll just get a, a brief introduction for uh, this class. Um, so let's take a look at uh, this right triangle. I'm going to label it uh, ABC. And I want to talk about the... Um, the parts of this. We know we've got legs, we know we've got a hypotenuse, but when we're talking about right triangle trigonometry, you want to picture yourself standing at, at one of the right or at one of the acute angles. So let's just put ourselves over here at angle A. So this is our perspective. We're standing at angle A. So when we talk about adjacent sides and opposite sides, those are going to change depending on which acute angle you're standing at. So for this one we're standing at A, but we could be standing at B, in which case our opposite and adjacent perspective would switch. So hypotenuse never changes. So um, the hypotenuse in this triangle is AB. So that's segment AB. Now the adjacent side, that's the side that we're next to, but it can't be the hypotenuse. So the side of the triangle that we're next to, it's got to be one of the legs, is side AC. And then the side that's clear across the triangle would be the opposite side, so that would be side BC. Okay, and again, my opposite and my adjacent are going to switch if I happen to be standing over here at angle B. Okay, opposite and adjacent sides switch if I move to angle B. So keep that in mind. And we'll look at that in an example. So when we're talking about the trig functions, the sine, the cosine, and the tangent, these are really just fancy ways of looking at ratios of triangles. These are fancy ways to talk about ratios of the sides of a right triangle. Okay, so, and it's important to keep this fact in mind anytime that you're doing um, right triangle trig. You're just looking for ratios of sides. So when we talk about the sine of angle A, the S-I-N is the abbreviation. It's uh, really uh, spelled S-I-N-E, sine. Um, that's the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. Okay, and if we're going to use this triangle as an example, if again we're standing at angle A, the opposite side is BC, and the hypotenuse is AB. So that this would be the sine ratio, BC to AB. If we're talking about the cosine, this is the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. So the side that we're next to, standing at angle A but not the hypotenuse, is going to be AC to the hypotenuse, which is AB. And the tangent ratio is the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side and incidentally this is the same as the sine of angle A over the cosine of angle A just file that away for future use so again the opposite side is BC and the adjacent side is AC so these are our three trig ratios there's actually um, some other trig ratios that we're not going to talk about right away so for this first example, we want to find the sine, cosine, and tangent for both acute angles. I'm going to give you a little bit more information. So I'm going to label this triangle A, B, C, and I'm going to give the lengths of the sides 3, 4, and 5. So let's start over here at angle A first. So we're standing at angle A. So I want the sine of angle A. And if you want to uh, pause the video and try and do these on your own, that would be great. So sine is opposite. So the opposite side is 3. It's clear across the triangle. It's 3. 
over the hypotenuse, which is 5. So this is the sine ratio. It's just the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. And the cosine of angle A, that's the ratio of the adjacent side. So again, standing here at angle A, the side adjacent to it, but not the hypotenuse, is 4 over 5. And then the tangent of angle A is the opposite over the adjacent, so that's 3 over 4. All right, so that's the sine, cosine, and tangent for angle A. Now we need to do the sine, cosine, and tangent for angle B. So our perspective now, we're standing over here at angle B. Our opposite side is going to be 4, and my adjacent side is going to be 3. So the sine of angle B, its opposite side is 4. Hypotenuse doesn't change. Cosine of angle B, adjacent, the side that uh, we are next to when we're at angle B is 3. So that's 3 over 5. And the tangent of angle B is the opposite side, which is 4, over the adjacent side, which is 3. So there's the three trig functions for the acute angles. We never do the trig functions for the right angle, ever. All right, so this example is a little bit different. What we want to do is we want to find the measures of the angles now. And we're going to use the trig functions and actually inverse of the trig functions to help us find these. So here's A, here's B, here's C. This is a right angle. Uh, this is 5, this is 12, this is 13, one of our triples. And we want to find the measure of angle A and angle B. So since we have all the sides, we really can use any of the trig functions that we want. And then once we found one of the angles, we could add those two up and subtract from 180. But I'm going to use trig functions for both um, acute angles. And I'll use two different ones just um, to show you that you could use any ones that you want. So for angle A, I'm going to use the cosine. So cosine of angle A, that's the adjacent side, which is 12, over the hypotenuse, which is 13. And we want to find out what angle A is. So if we were doing algebra and we had something like 3x plus 5 equals 12, we would subtract 5 from both sides. That's the inverse operation. Well, the inverse operation for cosine is literally cosine inverse. So we take the cosine inverse of both sides, cosine inverse of 12 over 13, so when we take the cosine inverse of both sides, the cosine inverse and the cosine, they cancel each other out, just like addition and subtraction cancel each other out. So we're left here with angle A, and then you plug this into your calculator. There's actually a cosine inverse button right above the cosine, so you're going to do a second cosine. Um, you want to make sure that your calculator mode is in degrees, so hit mode and make sure it's on degrees. And then when you plug this in, you should get 22.6 degrees. So there's uh, the measure of one of the acute angles. We still have to find angle B. Again, you can use any trig function that you want. Um, I'm going to use tangent for no particular reason. So the tangent of angle B, standing over here at angle B, that's the opposite, which is 12, over the adjacent, which is 5. So I'm going to take the tan inverse of both sides tan inverse of the tangent of angle B is equal to the tan inverse of 12 over 5. So the tan inverse and the tan cancel out, and we're left with angle B is equal to 67.4 degrees. And these two should add up to 90 because, remember, the three angles add up to 180. We already have 90, so the rest has to be 90. All right, so there's a little uh, mnemonic device uh, that you may have seen before for memorizing the uh, three trig functions, it's a so ka toa. Okay? The S here is for sine, the C here is for cosine, and the T here is for tangent, and then the OH, AH, and OA, those just represent the other pieces of the ratio. So sine opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent opposite over adjacent. So make sure you write down any questions, and uh, we'll see you next time. That's it.